We also have a link to that on KGW.com. That is also where you can check to see if you are registered with a political party. Now, that's something you do not have to do, and a lot of you have told me that you are super proud of being non-affiliated, declaring no political party has your allegiance, which is fine. But Oregon has closed primaries, meaning only registered Democrats can vote in the Democratic primary, only registered Republicans can vote in the Republican primary. So if you want to vote for candidates in the governor's race or congressional races or state legislative races, you do have to pick a party by today. Otherwise, your ballot will only have nonpartisan races like judges and local measures. And this is for the primary that we're talking about. Anna sent us this email saying, browsing through the voters pamphlet for the Oregon primary election today, my spouse and I were discussing why Oregon still has closed primaries. I once heard that approximately one out of every three registered voters in Oregon are affiliated with a party other than the Democrats or Republicans or not affiliated with the party at all. That law seems pointless to me. Today there are, I believe, only nine states that have closed primaries. So why are Oregon's primaries still closed? Seems like having closed primaries is kind of forcing people eager to participate in the right to vote to choose affiliation with one of the two main political parties? Well, that is a great question, Anna. Different states have different ways that their primaries work, and you are right. Oregon is one of only nine states where primaries are completely closed. We're showing you the red states there in map. On the map, those, that's where it's closed. That means you have to become a member of the political party to vote in one with no exceptions. So, what's the thinking behind this? Well, there's arguments for and against closed primaries. Some say they prevent crossover voting. For example, if a Democrat thought Bud Pierce, who's a Republican, was a weaker Republican than Christine Drazen, they would vote for Pierce, hoping he would win in the primary and then lose to the Democrat in the general election. Now, I just made that up. I'm not saying Pierce is weaker at all, and I'm not saying Democrats would do that at all, but that is the strategy behind the crossover vote. The flip side of this is with the closed primary, some argue that candidates are forced to take more extreme positions because only the hardcore voters turn out in a primary, and they are often more extreme than the general population. So candidates have to appeal to them to win, and that keeps more moderate candidates from advancing to the general election. Right now, a group called Oregon Open Primaries is trying to get an initiative on the November ballot. It would amend the state constitution to allow open primaries for statewide and federal offices. They're still collecting signatures, and they need almost 150,000 to make it onto the ballot. We should mention that voters have rejected similar ballot measures in 2014 and 2008. So here's my opinion on that. First, let's remember that at a time some states seem to be working to make it harder to vote, Oregon has always been a leader in making it easy. We were the first in the nation to make vote by mail the standard, and that was 24 years ago. And then six years ago, we were the first in the nation again, this time with the motor voter registration. That signs you up to vote when you renew your driver's license. Against that backdrop, I think this is absolutely ridiculous that we still have closed primaries. Come on. I checked 90 minutes ago. There are 1,027,139 unaffiliated voters in Oregon. That's more than the number of regis registered Republicans. It's more than the number of registered Democrats. But the current rules will keep those million people from voting in the primary for either the Democrat or Republican candidates for governor, Congress, or state legislative races. That's just wrong. And I know the argument about crossover voting, but I doubt enough people would actually do that to make a difference. One of the common arguments against closed primaries is that it makes the candidates more loyal to the party than to the voters. That does sound accurate to me. Oregon state law allows Democrats and Republicans to close their primaries. And I just looked up that Oregon open primary initiative. It's pretty simple. It would just change the state constitution to require all publicly funded elections for state and federal office be open to all qualified candidates and to all registered voters, regardless of party affiliation. I gotta say, that sounds like a better system than what we have now. If we really want leaders who represent the people, we should let as many of the people as possible vote for those leaders. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong, let me know. Send me an email. The address is the story at kgw.com or call our phone number, leave a message, 503-226-5090.